everyone, Season 7 of Paladins is inbound, and with it, we got some notes to talk about. Despite this being the Season patch, there is no new champion this patch. Which is a little disappointing, as a new champion has been a staple of the new season for all seasons prior. First off, rank reward for this season is Ultimatum Fernando, which is based off the updated model of Ares from Smite. The skin looks very clean, and even though I don't play Fernando, I am tempted to grind out rank for the skin. 75 wins in Hell is a lot to ask though. Next we have additions to the map pool for Onslaught. Ascension Peak, Bazaar, Snowfall Junction, and Bright Marsh, which will first be tested as an LTM, are coming to the Onslaught queue. As you all know, I'm an Onslaught player, so I have a few comments about this. Ascension Peak and Snowfall Junction were both playable in Onslaught at one point, so the addition of those maps is passable. I do worry about Snowfall Junction a bit, as in the past, snipers were incredibly powerful due to the open space and long sightlines. As stated prior, I did not like Bazaar as an Onslaught map, as I thought it was too easy to spawn camp, so not a fan of that. I also didn't get a chance to test Bright Marsh on the PTS, so I will hold my thoughts on that. Even though the possibility of a new Onslaught map seems far out of reach, I appreciate the effort into giving the game mode more variety through rebranding other maps. Next up we have the new Battle Pass. Well, kinda an old Battle Pass. The Event Pass this patch is the flashback event Beat Bots, which will have 5 skins from the Remix and Battle Suit Passes. If you already own those skins, you will instead receive Crystals. The reason for this recycled pass is to give the team more time to work on original skins for the next patch. Which, given the bugs on some of the recent skins, yeah, I think they need more time. While I am one to preach quality over quantity, I must say, it feels odd to not have a unique pass this patch, especially for the start of the season. Luckily, we're shaking things up with Paladin's first new game mode since King of the Hill back in 2019. The new LTM coming is Capture the Flag. Not much to explain here. If you've played TF2 or Overwatch, you know how this mode works. Unique to Paladins, though, are some quirks you receive while holding the flag. Players wielding the flag have their ultimate replaced with a dash, but are revealed to the entire enemy team and are locked out from their abilities. I'm not a big fan of Capture the Flag from both TF2 and Overwatch, but I'm very excited to give the mode a try in Paladins. I've been saying for a long time that Paladins needs new game modes, and am thrilled to see that come to fruition. But that's not it for new game modes. The next LTM is the return of survival from the beta days. Two teams face off Eliminator style. If you die, you don't respawn until the next round. Additionally, the fog is in play which slowly closes in, damaging you if you touch it. The fog disrupts camping, and forces teams to the middle of the map. I never got a chance to play survival, but it sounds like it'll be fast and a lot of fun. Definitely a mode to play if you don't have a lot of time. Very much looking forward to this. I can't wait to see what team comps end up looking like for this mode. Another new LTM is the Arcade, which will host 5 LTMs at once instead of just one. Yes! More variety is needed in Paladins. Well done! Alrighty, let's move on to balance. Starting with the item shop. The first set of changes is nerfs to the percentages on Arcane Warding, Armor Plating, and Veteran. Stacking DR and bonus health is pretty insane right now, so I approve of these changes. I do question the nerf to Arcane Warding since it's rarely played, but I suppose it ties into the overall theme of nerfing DR. On the topic of Veteran, I think a good way to rebalance it would be to make it a cheap item, around 150 to 200 credits, at the cost of lower scaling. This way Veteran would be a cheaper alternative to Haven, if you need tankiness in a pinch, but don't have the credits to invest. Last item change is for Trigger Scent. The item scaling is going up from 5 to 6%, but it will now only affect weapon shots. Meaning on most champs, this is a flat out buff. While not as outrageous as I initially thought, I'm still not a fan of this item's inclusion, and am not a fan of buffing its percentages. Next on to Champion Balance. The overall theme is reworking slash adding more value to useless loadout cards and general quality of life buffs. However, there are some mixed results. Starting us up is Azan with a buff to the Flames of Wrath card. This card increases the duration of Reckoning's Lift. The scaling is being doubled going from 10 to 20%. Now the card feels like a noteworthy addition to a build and should bolster loadout diversity for Azan. Following up with more card changes is Atlas. The Lessons of the Past card is getting its duration upped from 3 to 5 seconds. This is the card that grants Atlas a personal shield when hitting setback. Next up, the Ravages of Time card is being reworked. 
The old card granted you 1% scaling ult charge upon earning an Elim. The new card now grants 5% scaling move speed for 4 seconds after getting an Elim. Personally, I thought the ult charge card was more valuable. Also, Atlas already has a better move speed card tied to his barrier. While both of these changes attempt to give Atlas more loadout diversity, I feel that they won't accomplish much, since Atlas has better and often necessary cards at his disposal. Next up is Barrack with a shift to the Accelerator Field card. This is the card that grants move speed to you and your team when passing through Barricade. The scaling is being increased from 6 to 10% per level, but the duration takes a hit, going from 5 to 4 seconds. Personally, I love this change. The card originally scaled by 10%, which made for a fun run-and-gun playstyle with Barrack's old hair trigger talent. I can't wait to make a new build with this card. And who knows, Barrack might be a new Paladin's Coordinated Strat's mainstay. Keeping to the trend of card changes is Betty La Bomba with a buff to Lost Realm. This card increases the AoE of all your explosions. Now the scaling will be 4% a level, up from 2%. Capped out, the AoE is bumped up by 20%, in my opinion. This card is still not worth running, as the AoE from Betty's Primary Fire is only 7 units. The Lost Realm card buffs that up to 8.4 units, which is still incredibly small. This card could see some use with the Cluster Grenades by comboing it with the From Betty with Love card, but otherwise I don't see it being picked much. Next up a change for Buck's Bully card. The current version of the card grants 12% scaling lifesteal against enemies affected by Nutshot. The new card now grants 10% scaling lifesteal for 2.5 seconds, after solely activating that shot. This is to remedy the issue of the old lifesteal not scaling properly with life rip, since that was quite strong since the item was buffed. Good change here. Now we're getting into the questionable section. Next up is Dredge with two card changes. The first is a rework to the Hall on the Bowline card. The old card increased your movement speed by 10% scaling for 2 seconds after using Shortcut. The new card increases your reload speed by 25% scaling for 3 seconds after using Shortcut. First up, I know, the scaling goes past the hard cap of 60% reload speed. Obviously, you shouldn't run this card capped out. But it could be a nice filler. Is what I would be saying if it weren't for this massive buff to the Gun Deck card. Now, on top of granting you bonus ammo, Gun Deck increases your reload speed by 8% per level. Capped out, Dredge has Deft Hands 2 at the start of a match. Okay, I know Paladins has had a rotating stock of developers over the years, so not everyone knows the war crimes of the past. Like upon Dredge's release, where he had a reload speed card at the same 40%. Yeah, that was not fun. We all know how frustrating a broadside scuttle Dredge can be at the end of the match, right? Well, now that's gonna happen at the start of the match with this card change. I am not in favor of this at all. This will be mega frustrating to face. Also, why run the previously mentioned Hall on the Bowline card when this exists? Next up, and my least favorite set of changes this patch, comes to Fernando. Aegis is going to the base kit. <laughs> the rest of this doesn't matter. You have Nando's best talent at base, and you are free to run his other two strong talents on top of this. We love hard forcing Wrecker. On the one hand, my personal hatred for Aegis despises this change. But on the other hand, I am a voucher of making necessary talents or loadout cards base kit, and this change is following that philosophy. Still, I would have liked to see some additional nerfs to the shield to compensate for the massive power bump Fernando is receiving to his base kit. For one, I think the cooldown of 0.5 seconds is way too short. That should be 1 to 2 seconds to avoid shield spamming. The barrier regaining health while it's active should be booted as well. And personally, I would like to see the barrier's HP go down a smidge somewhere in between 4,005 and 5,000 HP. To compensate, I think these nerfs should be undone when picking the new Aegis talent, as this new talent doesn't sound that great, especially when Wrecker comes online. Bias aside, I think this can be a healthy change, but the shield needs compensation nerfs. Next up we got Furia and Grok. Great news, support keywords are being wiped from these two, with presumably Pip and Grover losing theirs next patch. Excellent! Support keywords were one of the worst changes this game has had. I'm glad they're going. Let's cover Furia first. Inflame will now take 15% longer to charge. Fair, as it's the strongest ult in the game. Kindle Soul's base healing is going up from 900 back to 1000 where it should be. All is right in the world. Keep in mind that Kindle Soul is much stronger now than before the keywords were introduced, 
as during the year, the old Cherish went to base kit. The Cherish talent is getting the AoE heal increased from 35 to 50 units. Nice change that should make the talent feel more noticeable, because as of right now, that's not the case. Unfortunately, I think that's going to be overshadowed due to the Solar Blessing buffs. First up, the heal per tick is going up from 150 to 175, meaning the beam will heal allies for 1750 health per second. But the big change here is that Furia can now heal herself with the beam. Why pick anything else when this talent offers you so much self-sustain? You go from the least sustainable support to the best with this one talent. Listen, I'm all for Solar Blessing buffs as I feel that it's currently underrated, but this is a bit much in my eyes. Last for Furia is a rework to the Righteous Path card. The old card increased the travel distance of Wings of Wrath by 10% scaling. This new card boosts move speed by 6% scaling for 3 seconds after using Wings of Wrath. A much better card than before. I can see this being used in many builds. Next support losing keywords is Grok. First up, the tick rate on Grok's totem has been reduced from once every 0.15 seconds to once every 0.1 second. To simplify, the healing per totem is going up from 256 to 385, which is much better for a stationary heal that can be destroyed. Grok totems on live feel pathetic. Oftentimes, I don't like having a Grok on my team, especially as a tank, because it feels like it takes forever to get healed. This change should alleviate that a bit. Next up, talents. All are being changed. Totemic Ward is up first. It's losing the 15% bonus heal to account for the base kit buff. Fair change in my eyes. Next, Maelstrom is having the starting damage of Lightning Staff go from 75 to 80 to match its keyworded state. Eh, I thought 75 was fine, but I'm not going to harp about an extra 50 DPS. Last up, buffs for Spirit's Domain. The bonus ammo count has been up from 15% to 25%, and the talent now grants allies hit by Lightning Staff 20% bonus move speed for one second. A nice bonus that ties into Grok's theme. On live, Spirit's Domain is nice for healing, but there's no reason to run it over Io or Ceres. Now with the move speed bonus, that might change. At the very least, it'll be fun with coordinated teams. Next we got Grover. Deep Roots is being reverted. Now instead of Crippling Throw gaining chain hits that spawn healing circles, the talent will change your Crippling Throw to a Root. Not listed in the patch notes, but it seems the projectile speed of Crippling Throw is made slower when you pick this talent. We'll need more people to confirm this though. That being said, I'm not the biggest fan of this change. The original Deep Roots, even before the bouncing nonsense, was already incredibly busted. A Root is one of the best CCs in this game. The opponent loses the ability to dodge shots and use their movement skills. I think this talent is leagues better than the Garbage on Live, but like the Dredge card buffs, I would have hoped that the devs learned from the past and adjusted the talent properly. Personally, I would slap a hefty cooldown increase to this talent. Crippling Throw is on a 7 second cooldown, which can be brought down to 4 seconds with cards, which can then be brought down to 3.2 seconds with Kronos. That's not okay in my eyes. Going back in post for an updated change, that being to Amani. The level 4 version of the Pyretic Momentum card is going to base kit, meaning that Frostfire Glide will be 20% faster next patch. Like I've repeated ad nauseum, Frostfire Glide is quite slow without the Pyretic Momentum card. So seeing it go to base kit is great, and should allow for more loadout flexibility. Because of this, Pyretic Momentum is getting reworked. The new card will increase your move speed by 8% scaling for 3 seconds after using Frostfire Glide. The fact that this speed buff procs after using Glide will make the ability doubly effective at repositioning. This new card looks to be very versatile on builds not using Mana Rift. I can't wait to experiment with it. Expect future vids on that. Originally, the devs opted for the level 3 version of Pyretic Momentum to go to base kit, while the new card would buff Frostfire Glide's turn speed. I think these new changes are much, much better. Also, two bug fixes for Amani. Damage falloff on Dragon's Call has been removed, which is a massive, massive buff for the ultimate. Now you're going to be dealing that full 1700 DPS the second you're in range. And the big one, the Inferno Cannon Momentum bug has been fixed. The ability now grants you knockback immunity. Praise Genos! One less thing for me to complain about every patch review video. Next up, Koga getting another adjustment to Adrenaline Junkie. Once again, you need 80 damage to generate 1 energy instead of 120. However, the talent no longer procs off of shields. Fair change. 
I do find it funny how the talent has pretty much returned to its original state after three patches. Next is Lex with another change to heroism. I didn't cover it on the channel, but heroism was mega nerfed in the recent hotfix, where the DR was massively neutered and the talent lost the CC immunity on the slide. Now the CC immunity is back. The DR is going from 40 to 50%, but the cooldown of combat slide is going to 8 seconds, which is over double the original cooldown. In my opinion, this talent will not be worth running. Next up is a card buff from Makoa. Harden, which gives you damage reduction when you hit hook, is getting its duration doubled, going from 2 to 4 seconds. A very nice buff for those hooker Makoas. Next up we got Maldamba with changes that the community is debating on. Mending Spirit's tick rate is being cut in half, while its duration is also being cut in half. To simplify, the ability still heals for the same, but that heal completes in 2 seconds, as opposed to 4. As of March 12th when I'm writing this script, Maldamba received some updates to Mending Spirit's cards. Originally, the uptime on these cards was tied to an ally being healed by spirits, but since the uptime is being cut in half, these cards would have suffered. The new time limits are as follows. For Possession, which grants down the DR, the uptime is 4 seconds. For Ritual Magic, the self-healing card, the uptime is 5 seconds. In Swift Spirits, is seen a bit of a hit, with the uptime of the ally's speed boost being lowered from 4 to 3 seconds. Overall, I think these changes will help Maldamba keep up with the power crypt supports like Ceres and Io, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh yeah, Slither's range is being upped from 54 to 60 units. Nice. Next up, Nyx is getting a nerf to Devastating Blows. This card increases the range needed to activate the bonus damage from Realm Breaker. Scaling is going down from 5 to 4, which is a 5 unit decrease when capped. I don't really feel this nerf is warranted, as Nyx's damage can feel quite pathetic against certain comps, but I also don't use this card much. Next up is Pip getting the same change as Buck to his Lifesteal card. Now it's activated upon using Explosive Flask instead of hitting with it. Next is Rom, who for some can be considered the winner of this patch. Juggernaut now applies a 900 impulse knockback on enemies hit, meaning that instead of knocking opponents straight up, you knock them in more of a 45 degree angle. To accompany this, the Declaration of War card has had its scaling up from 4 to 7%, and now the card increases the knockback strength on top of the knock-up strength. I played with this one on PTS, and I must say, it's quite chaotic and fun. That's not it for Juggernaut. Now the Enforcer talent grants ROM CC immunity for 1.2 seconds upon activating Juggernaut. Adding CC immunity to Juggernaut has been a community request since ROM's release. I'm very happy to see it here. That being said, I still think Rom is hard countered by CC, even with this talent. All this talent says to the enemy is, hey, just wait 1.2 seconds and then stun me out of my movement skill. Obviously, having some CC immunity is better than none, but I still don't see Rom being a strong pick. I would have preferred to see the scrap change of his souls ignoring anti-healing. Next we got Sky, who is receiving a lot of love since being gutted last patch. It should be noted that the damage on Wrist Crossbow was reverted with the hotfix. First, a rework to slip away. The old garbage boosted your out-of-combat movement speed. The new card heals you for 3% of your max health every second while in hidden. Capped out, it heals for 300 health a second. Not too shabby. This card will be especially good with the buff to Preparation. Now, Preparation grants you a second charge of hidden. The max duration of the ability with the talent is going up from 3 to 4 seconds, but the damage reduction you receive is going down from 75% to 50%. Overall, this talent sounds leagues more interesting than the lame version we have now. Keep in mind, the talent also refills your ammo upon using Hidden. So in theory, you can empty your mag on someone, pop Hidden, empty the mag again, pop Hidden again, and empty the mag a third time. That sounds ridiculous, but Sky needs something like this to counteract her stealth being useless since last patch. Speaking of stealth, Smoke and Dagger has been reverted! Praise Genos! You all know this, but this talent was one of my favorites in this game, as I loved the twist it provided on being a support. Now that it's back, I'm definitely going to be playing Sky again. Next up is Terminus with a fix to the Massacre Axe. TLDR, no regis shouldn't be a thing anymore. I will be the judge of that once it goes to live. Next is Torvald with another nerf to the Wind Dancer card. This is the card that grants your bubble target move speed. Now instead of starting at 10% and scaling by 5%, the card starts at 7% and scales by 
capped out the difference goes from a 30% move speed boost to 19%. This card is not even worth running anymore. And you know what sucks? This completely misses the point of what's annoying about Torvald right now, which is insane bubbles provided by the Thanks Grandpa Talent and Guardian. I would have rather seen one of those nerfed instead of this. Next is Vora continuing the trend of card changes. First, a buff to Broken Promises. This is a card that heals you when you hit Obliteration. The scaling is going up from 60 to 100. Capped, it's now a 500 health heal. Not bad, but kind of redundant due to Vora's Dark Siphon and passive. False Idol, which is a card that grants move speed and lifesteal upon dipping below 40% health, is getting some chunky buffs. The move speed bonus is going up from 5% to 7%. The lifesteal is going up from 5% to 10%. And the duration is being upped from 2 to 5 seconds. Capped out, you gain 35% move speed and 50% lifesteal. Even though that's chunky. I don't see this card being run much, as why run this when Vora has better and more consistent options? Vora has other ways to heal, and this card is on a 15 second timer, and requires you to be around 800 health to activate. In my opinion, I think changing this card to be a filler would be better. Keep the move speed and lifesteal at these high values, but change the scaling to affect the internal cooldown of the card. I think that would be a more worthwhile addition to Vora's arsenal. Last card change for Vora is a massive buff to the Unified in Purpose card. This is a card that grants Vora DR upon hitting Dark Siphon. Now instead of the static 10% DR with the scaling time limit, the time limit will always be 3 seconds with 6% scaling damage reduction. Capped out, you can gain 30% DR for 3 seconds. This card is going to be a must pick, and it's going to replace Vora's damage reduction cards on Tendril, as this scales better and is tied to a shorter cooldown. Next up is the winner of the patch in my eyes, Willow, who has a new passive tied to Flutter. Now Willow can hover in midair, similar to Androxus, by holding the jump button. When compared to Andro, it seems that Willow falls faster, but she keeps her momentum. On the PTS, this was so fun to play with. I don't think this will make Willow a meta character or anything, but this is a very creative way to buff the champ. It will open up a ton of playstyle shifts for her. Keep in mind this change is accompanied by recent buffs to Willow's ammo count and seedling cooldown. Can't wait to experiment with her more. To wrap us up is Ying with a card rework to disappear. The old garbage increased your out of combat move speed. The new card grants you 40% move speed for 3 seconds when dipping below 30% health. The card has an internal cooldown of 30 seconds, with each level in the card taking off 5 seconds. In my opinion, the health threshold is a little low, but I do see this card being a popular filler option for Ying. There is a whole list of bug fixes this update, most of them tied to ability descriptions, but that's too long to cover, so we're gonna leave the vid here. What do you guys think about the impending Season 7 update? Let me know down below. Don't forget to clap that like button and laser down that sub button. Setching the bell is also a great way to stay in the loop. As always, I'm Yellow Ninja, and peace.